Hands up if you love an ancient mystery. We see a lot of hands up out there, so we're going to go right ahead with this video full of ancient enigmas, old riddles, and unsolved puzzles that have survived the passing of the years without ever being fully solved. This video is a reminder that the past is often a strange country, and one to which none of us can ever travel. Historians consider Archimedes to be one of the world's greatest scientists and inventors. One of Archimedes' most famous inventions is the so-called Claw of Archimedes. This extraordinarily clever construction, sometimes known as the Iron Hand, was a key element of Syracuse's city walls, meant to protect the walls against sea attack. According to ancient historians, the Claw could lift opposing ships completely out of the water. It's best summed up as a crane with a massive grappling hook at its end. Ships trapped in the Claw were tilted until they capsized or scooped up and dumped on other ships. Several of these weapons were built and utilized during the Second Punic War, which took place around 2,200 years ago. The Roman fleet that attacked Syracuse had no idea such advanced defenses existed and, as a result, sustained significant losses. The BBC conducted a plausibility study in 1999 for a show called Secrets of the Ancients, and the gadget was deemed to be feasible. In 2005, the Discovery Channel conducted another investigation that came to the same conclusion. It was surely one of the mightiest weapons of its age. Since 2005, the German Research Foundation's Institute for Archaeological Sciences has been investigating Nigeria's mysterious Nok civilization, and it isn't finished yet. It is, however, going to reach its conclusion eventually. Archaeologists expect to have a complete picture of the people who lived in this section of West Africa 2,500 years ago by the time it's completed in two years. Their society lasted approximately 1,500 years. They lived in small farming settlements and produced pearl millet in their leisure time, but spent their evenings and weekends creating elaborate terracotta statues like the ones shown here. Long before anyone knew where they came from, they were sought-after items on the worldwide art market. Some of the figures are humans, but the majority of them are animals. Historians don't know what they were made for at the moment, presuming they had any meaning beyond art. Archaeologists wonder if this is the origin of the ritual of making clay replicas of the deceased and placing them on their graves, which is still practiced in several societies in modern West Africa. Let's hope they obtain some answers. Next up, we're in Jaltapan in Mexico, where construction work accidentally uncovered a site containing an entire ancient settlement in November 2015. When archaeologists were summoned to the scene, they found a gravesite of 30 human skeletons arranged around the ruins of a pyramid-like monument. The settlement and everything in it are thought to be around 2,000 years old and full of pre-Columbian artifacts. The research team found personal effects in the graves, including jade beads, clay figurines, hand mirrors, and, most strangely of all, animal bones. It seems possible that some of these people might have been buried with their pets. As for the pyramid, it's around 40 feet tall, and while it might be Mayan in origin, there's every chance that it might be Tajin instead. It's rare to see a large stone monument of this age in this part of the state of Veracruz, but if there's one to be found, it's possible that there might yet be more. Experts say that the site might even have been multicultural, which is a conclusion based on the discovery of Mayan brickwork and figurines next to Teotihuacan-type pottery. It's generally accepted that modern human civilization began around 12,000 years ago, but there are some who believe that we started building permanent cities long before that. One of them is Dr. Alexander Koltipin of the Natural Science Research Center in Moscow, who claims to have found evidence of a human-made underground complex that's more than one million years old. Not only that, but he believes the complex he's found is connected to other ancient complexes across the Mediterranean. The site he claims as evidence is close to the Hervatburgen ruins of a Dulam Grove nature reserve in Israel. 
He also claims the above-ground site of Cappadocia in Turkey as part of his connected complex, and also Turkey's Kavusan rock city. Kolipin's evidence is shaky at best, but if he was right about the existence of an advanced civilization all that time ago, it would help to explain phenomenons like the enormous megaliths in Baalbek, which can't possibly have been transported to their current location by the people of their era, and yet apparently were. The same could be said about the tracks in the rock in Turkey's Phrygian Valley, which are similarly unexplained. Archaeologists in Oslo, Norway are used to finding Viking artifacts, but there's nothing Viking about this next artifact. It's a wooden figurine with extremely detailed facial features, and it's more than a little bit frightening to look at. The figurine is four inches high and was found in 2015, but experts have no idea who or what it's supposed to represent. Its head is covered by a tight-fitting hood that starts above the face, loops around it, and then tightens up again beneath the chin. The best theory anyone's come up with so far is that it's a game piece that would have been used in a board game similar to chess, but it seems slightly too large for such an application. Other, less interesting discoveries that were made at the same time as the figurine suggest that it might have been carved during the early 12th century, but it's entirely without analog for that period of history. Oslo was already an important international trade center by the 12th century. Might this piece have found its way to Oslo from somewhere else? If so, where? There are a few magnificent titles we can give to the archaeological site of Takti-e-Soleiman in northern Iran. We could call it the ultimate temple of Zoroastrianism. We could also say it's the most important site that the ancient Sassanid Empire ever built. This is a stunning ancient site set into a beautiful valley surrounded by volcanic mountains, but almost nobody in the Western world even knows it exists. Takhta Soliman is one of several Iranian UNESCO World Heritage Sites and is thought to have been built during the 6th century before being partially demolished and then rebuilt and expanded during the Ikhanid period of the 13th century. It was used as a palace after the 13th century, but prior to that, the site had contained a fire temple, an Anahita temple, and a small hillside structure known as Solomon's Prison. Going back even further, the mound that the site exists on is artificial and was created about 2,500 years ago. At some unidentified point in the past, a wall was built around the entirety of Takta e Soliman with gates to control access, so it seems that as well as being a palace, this place was once a prison. There are only four pre-Columbian Mayan books that date to the post-classic period of Mesoamerican chronology that are known to have survived to the modern age. One of them is the Madrid Codex, also known as the Troano Codex or the Tro Cortesianos Codex. It's called the Madrid Codex because it's currently in the private collection of the Museo de América in Madrid, Spain, where it's considered to be the most important artifact in the entire museum and so is closely guarded. Like the other ancient Mayan Codex books, the Madrid Codex is a fortune-telling aid. It's full of both horoscopes and almanacs, along with complex astronomical tables. As well as helping to foretell the future, the Codex provides Mayan priests with advice on how to go about conducting certain ceremonies. Some of these are harmless, for example, the traditional Maya New Year ceremony, but others include both animal and human sacrifice. In the case of the latter, it was thought by the author of the Codex that sacrificing humans at the correct time of year would bring about rainfall. As for the fortune-telling aspects of the Codex, they're as complex as Mayan texts of this kind always are and can't be fully decoded. We're moving from a mysterious religious book to a mysterious religious complex in Tampak Siring Bali. It's the Gunung Kawi Temple Complex. It's likely that it was created as a Hindu memorial based on its design, but this isn't definite. We don't know who built it or when it was erected. They did a fantastic job, whoever they were. Gunung Kawi is stunning, and the masonry is of exceptional quality. 
The most popular version of their origin story claims that they were commissioned by King Anak Wongsu of the Udiyana dynasty in the early 11th century. He reportedly requested a private tomb in which to bury his favorite brides. It's a wonder why so many of his favorite wives died before he did. The hypothesis is supported by an inscription on the shrine's northernmost wall that reads, The king built his temple here. There are ten shrines in total, each of which is roughly 20 feet tall and was carved by hand. Some of the stones were softened by a chemical procedure to make them carvable, but the manner by which this was accomplished has been lost to time. This next find appears to most people to be a rather ordinary and unremarkable speckled stone. But it's a Native American instrument, according to archaeologist Bob Kirks, that could be thousands of years old. The stone is one of the hundreds discovered at Hamanasset State Park in Madison, Connecticut by Kurtz and his colleagues. The spherical, baseball-like shape of the stones, which is the product of carving and polishing, is a telltale clue that they were employed as tools. Other archaeologists believe the tools could have been gaming pieces or weights, but Bob believes they were most likely used for breaking open nuts or animal bones. The presence of collagen and bone traces on several of the stones supports Bob's theory. However, the fact that some of them are constructed of quartz negates that notion, as quartz isn't the best material for such a purpose. What we can state for sure is that there are numerous of them in the vicinity. If Native Americans in Madison were smashing animal bones with these stones, they were doing so on a nearly industrial scale. Archaeologists finally cracked the case of the Nocheto Vasca Votiva in June 2021 after years of investigation. In 2005, a strange underground monument was uncovered in Italy's Po Valley. It was identified as a wooden water tank, or possibly a community bath, but that was all archaeologists could come up with at the time. More hints were revealed thanks to a recent radiocarbon dating breakthrough, including the revelation that the structure is 3,400 years old. Non-invasive scanning techniques confirmed the presence of a nearly identical building buried precisely beneath the Nocetto Vasca Votiva during a second investigation of the ground. There's a lot more hidden here than that. The scans and subsequent digging revealed a large quantity of ceramics and figures, all of which had been deliberately buried. Based on all of this, it now appears highly plausible that this location was previously home to a water cult, with the bath or tank serving as the focal point of their ritual activity. Given that they built a new structure directly on top of the old, it's possible that they arrived here much early than 3,400 years ago. Archaeologists in Finland were ecstatic when they discovered this snake staff in June 2021, Albeit given the scale of the relic, it might be more correct to refer to it as a snake stick. The reason for their excitement is that the stick is likely to have belonged to a Neolithic era shaman and is a dead ringer for the snake staffs that frequently feature in Neolithic era rock art in the area. The staff was discovered preserved beneath a layer of peat near Yarvinsuo. In the wetland here, there is a prehistoric settlement where people lived for roughly 2,000 years after first arriving 6,000 years ago. Images of humans from this era wielding snake staffs have been discovered on rocks not only in Finland but also in Russia. This is the first time a genuine staff of this nature has been discovered. It's likely that its owner utilized it in some sort of magical ceremony but the form and purpose of those ceremonies will likely remain a mystery to us. What we can say is that snakes appear as mystical figures in the folklore of seemingly unconnected ancient cultures all over the world, and we've never been able to identify the reasons for that. The Effigy Mounds National Monument is located along the Mississippi River in Iowa, USA. It's undeniably deserving of recognition as a national monument, but it's odd that the Americans would bestow such an honor on something they know so little about. The monument's four square miles are home to 195 mounds, the majority of which are cone-shaped. The ones that aren't cone-shaped, there are perhaps 30 of them, are shaped like bears or birds. While they were obviously crafted by Native Americans, 
no one knows which Native American culture developed them. We also have no idea why this site has remained a hallowed site for so long. The oldest of the mounds dates to around 2,480 years ago, while the most recent was built near the end of the 13th century. There's little doubt that the group that built the more recent mounds was not the same as the one that built the oldest, but they must have shared some cultural beliefs and behaviors. Most of the mounds contained copper, stone, and bone artifacts, although some don't appear to contain any human remains at all. That only adds to their mystique. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.